Hey friends, it's Anjali here. Happy summer everyone. It's Tuesday, August 17th. Welcome to the Mission's Changed My Life show by Global Hope India with your host Kevin White. This is the podcast where we say yes to God's call to go make Christ known in India and around the world. Please help us out by subscribing, reviewing and sharing the show. On Friday, September 3rd, Kevin will be sharing a powerful message from God's word entitled God Speaks and You're Not Deaf. God Speaks and You're Not Deaf. I hope you'll join us for this international live broadcast from the USA via Zoom, YouTube or Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday, September 3rd. Details at kevinby.us. We'll see you there. How about a free gift from Global Hope India? We are making Kevin's new book, Audacious Generosity, free for every listener located in the USA. Simply email us your mailing address to info at globalhopeindia.org and you'll get your free copy in the mail. That's info at globalhopeindia.org. Okay, now here's your host, Kevin White. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Missions Changed My Life. I am Pastor Kevin here with our co-host Courtney. How are you? Hello, everyone. How are you? Hello. We're waving to you on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, we have always welcomed everyone listening on their favorite podcast platform, mm -hmm. and we have listeners from 121 countries. Courtney, wow, it's gone up. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Thank you for listening. Yeah, obviously, most of our friends are from the USA and India, but we welcome everyone from Singapore, Thailand, Germany, Japan. Welcome to the Olympics, everyone. Wow. It's all yeah. it's finishing now, <laughs> uh, but China. Uh, Canada, Mexico, and everywhere in between, we welcome you. Afghanistan, Uganda, thank you for listening to Missions Changed My Life. And I also want to encourage you to go over and get the book uh, at kevinwhite.us, the, the book Audacious Generosity. We'll talk a little bit about that on the podcast today, uh, but we want to just give you a quick update on today's episode of Global Hope India. We are finishing out the summer of 2021. Courtney, how hot has it been where you are? Um, it is pretty toasty here. Um, well, this week we're cooling down with rain, so it does feel similar to living in India, but I think yeah. the heat's gonna come right back. So maybe maybe we're seeing a glimpse of India while we're in America since we can't go. God's yeah. bringing the heat to us. <laughs> yeah, and parts of India, they really count the days of the heat because they know on the third day it's the hottest, but then the rain comes and mm -hmm. cools it down again, and then it builds back up, and three days later it's intense heat, and then the rain comes. Uh, hopefully that's the cycle that it's happening in, and uh, it's not too much rain where you are, but it's not um, – to less rain either. We know uh, friends in California are really suffering right now uh, of a severe drought. And I just hope that wherever you are, there's a good balance of rain and heat and all the seasons. But we wish you the best of health and prosperity. And we're yeah. very grateful to have you uh, on the show today. As you know, our podcast really is dedicated to telling the stories of all the people who have been traveling uh, and how missions <laughs> has changed their lives. And for 18 months, there's been no travel. But we have had lots of great guests during this time, people who have gone years ago over to India through Global Hope India. And we're going to be continuing to celebrate uh, the stories of how missions has changed people's life. We're not detouring from that. But we do want to just pause a little bit today on the episode and just update people on Global Hope India. Uh, so, Courtney, no travel in 18 months? No, no travel. Yeah, the global <laughs> pandemic has stopped international travel. Uh, we're not even sure if we're going to be able to go back to India in 2021. Uh, the likelihood is very, very slim uh, that mm -hmm. tourists will be allowed back uh, into India this year. But we are ready to go. We are preparing to go as soon as uh, international travel safely opens up again. Uh, we look forward to being back. Uh, but we have definitely not closed down. There's no cobwebs at Global Hope India uh, <laughs> at, at this moment. We're very busy um, in, in continuing the mission that God has given to Global Hope India. Uh, mm -hmm. Courtney, what, what would you, how would you articulate that mission? What has yeah. been the heartbeat of Global Hope India? 
I think the highlight is just how God and the success that God set us up for as an organization is that we get to empower local native Indian pastors, community leaders, um, and so we didn't have to go to India to make a difference in India. Mm-hmm. God gave us partnerships and relationships and even family friends um, just by knowing them for so long now with vetted community um, and church leaders, like we said. And so they're doing the work. They've been doing the work. They never stopped doing the work. And we're just getting to empower them. So one thing mm-hmm. that has shifted between us not going is now we're just really trying to raise awareness. And if you followed the podcast or Global Hope Indian on, on any platform you've seen, we've just kind of been trying to pump out these stories to tell you what's going on because the work never stopped. God never stopped working. If anything, I would say India is more receptive. Um, and so it's just been cool to see our partners really being the hands and feet for the last 18 months and God keeping them safe. Um, we've had some partners that have experienced experience COVID and there's been loss and hardship. Um, but I really believe the umbrella of GHI and just the blessing and favor God has put has protected all of our partners and, and even given them peace when their family members haven't, haven't been doing as well as we have. And so, yeah, the mission has not stopped at all. Right. Right. Very key word there in power. I remember when mm-hmm. uh, I was leaving Hope Community Church to focus full time on Global Hope India. There'd been no one on staff. We had a bank account. We were a 5013C. Uh, but I went over to India for a week and just uh, prayed and cried out to God about what he would want Global Hope India to do. Because as you know, in India, uh, the opportunity for the gospel is endless and the need is endless. And so what could we possibly do to bring glory to God um, out of this organization we call Global Hope India? And one of the things God really impressed upon me is not to replace the indigenous leaders but to come alongside them and empower them. And so Global Hope India doesn't stop when Americans can't go to to India. That's not really been the mission of Global Hope India is not to take Americans to India. It is one of our uh, foremost activities because of our mission to empower. Uh, we, We do everything that we do to empower the local church in India. We actually only do one thing and that's advance the gospel. And we do it in one way and that's through the local church. And so, yeah, a medical team can be very helpful to a church in India. Uh, But uh, when when Americans can't come, uh, the gospel is not um, at a detriment there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And so God is always at work in India, whether we go or not. But he has given us the call to go. Um, I'm looking at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It's one of our uh, keynote verses. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So we've been called to go, and we will go again. But there's a lot of ways that we can go without necessarily being allowed to sit on a plane internationally at the moment. Courtney, just what are a few things that we've been doing over the last 18 months to continue to go and to, more more importantly, empower the church? Mm -hmm. So we've one huge way of just empowering the church is through prayer. Spiritual warfare is huge. The devil wants nothing more than to use a pandemic to divide us. We've seen that globally. That's not just in India. So praying Mm -hmm. for your own family, for yourself, for protection, but also sending those prayers and and praying blessings over the people of India and truly remembering, even just remembering India. That's something that's really hard to do in America because it is another planet to some people. Um, But just remembering those people there and, and trying to stay up to date. That's another thing is the news in America. We don't really cover really what's going on in India. And it's not that India is horrible at all. But there is a a huge difference between there's a a big line between wealthy and non-wealthy. And so even with vaccines, that's a big one since finally vaccines are becoming available, but they're still available at a high cost. So majority of of Indians that are below the poverty line cannot afford that. So that's Mm -hmm. a huge mission has just been our church partners getting to go and knock on people's door or getting to go to people that have said, Pastor, I want a vaccine. I need it. I'm scared. And the pastor getting to say, here you go, in Jesus' name, here's a vaccine. And that's coming from the church here, the church Western, Mm -hmm. usually in America, but all over the world. If you're listening, you are a part of the church. So that's coming just by the big church saying, you know what, let's let's give to these people. We are fortunate in America to not have to pay 
but but that's not the case in India. Um, and so vaccines, and as well as vaccines, food kits, groceries. Um, we talked about this last year. So many migrant workers, hundreds of thousands, were displaced, and families are starving. I mean, we're mm -hmm. we are fortunate that our government has been able to send out stimulus checks, but in India, I don't even know the the beginning workings of every Indian being able to get a stimulus check. They're they're just a little bit behind when it comes to the organization of that. Um, and so we really have just been able to stimulate the church, I would say, in, in the body of Christ to go out and give food kits in Jesus name and pray over people and be in the red light district, praying over women that have had a really hard job as sex workers, but now God has saved them in this time. And so just in, in every aspect, we're just seeing God provide for the least of these, even during a global pandemic. Hey, it's Anjali. We will be right back. Kevin White is an international speaker and best-selling author who loves helping people everywhere to prosper in God's presence. A serial entrepreneur, Kevin has helped start hundreds of businesses, non-profits and churches. As founder and executive director of Global Hope India, Kevin has traveled over 1 million miles to 27 different countries, speaking to thousands of audiences throughout India and the world. Visit KevinWhite.us for Kevin's books, one-minute motivation series and podcasts. Visit KevinWhite.us today. For over 20 years, Global Hope India has been empowering the church in India as they make Christ known. Visit GlobalHopeIndia.org and learn how you can pray, give and go. Over 1,000 people have served on one of GHI's short-term mission trips to India. Now you can join a virtual mission team to India. Visit GlobalHopeIndia.org today because everyone should have access to hear about Jesus. Okay, now back to the show. I love your point about remembering India and uh, our staff, our board, the people involved in Global Hope India can, can assure you of this. When India is in the global news, um, the giving to Global Hope India, the engagement goes up. But unfortunately, 95, 98% of the time, we rarely, if ever, hear India in the global news. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, people who have traveled with Global Hope India might have a, a, a keyword of India in their news feed or something. And so they're getting that news. But the vast majority of Americans rarely, if ever, hear a whole lot about the need for the gospel, the opportunity for the gospel in India. And so Global Hope India is one of those drums of the Holy Spirit just constantly beating, what about my people in India? What about your brothers and sisters in India? What about the billion people who have never held, had the luxury of holding a Bible? Um, right. and, and so, yeah, we're, we're grateful to get to do what we do. And that doesn't stop because of a global pandemic. I was listening to a message by Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback Church. And one of the points he said is uh, people often turn to the Lord in their time of suffering. When there is a death, when there is a time of pain, is when they become open and vulnerable, humble to the, to the Lord, to the gospel. And we are seeing that happen. There have been baptized baptisms just recently in Chennai. There is food distribution happening where people who would never go into the church are coming in for prayer uh, in the Shakna Putnam. Um, and all of our partners around India are seeing an increased interest in the gospel and humility before the Lord. And we know that God honors that. We don't want suffering. We're not asking God to make people suffer, but we are aware of how God uses that for his glory. And we're seeing that and we're grateful for every prayer. So our three core pillars, uh, what, what are they, Courtney? Pray, give, go. Yeah. And so we're grateful for every prayer, for every gift and mm -hmm. for every way in which uh, people are continuing to go. Um, mm -hmm. And so let's dive into that. Uh, right now, we're, we're not able to travel. So we are very busy in resource development. Mm -hmm. And uh, this podcast is one of those resources. But we have two other podcasts. We have the Living the Dream podcast. And I have the Kevin White Show podcast. 
And uh, so one way that we've been inviting people to go and they've been engaging is by being on the Missions Change My Life podcast and telling their story. If you've ever gone to India with Global Hope India and you've not yet just shared a 30 minute conversation of your story of how God has used missions to change your life, that is a part of his story your testimony he's given you that you could offer brothers and sisters around the world to encourage them. And so engage by simply uh, being on the show and and scheduling a 30-minute interview. It's painless. It's a lot of fun. And it is uh, so impactful uh, for brothers and sisters around the world to hear how God has used missions to change your life. Right. Yeah. I agree. And I plead with you, please, please, please reach out because we, I, that's one of my favorite things is just getting to hear stories. I join, I've, I've known a lot of GHI, just a lot of uh, trip alumni, just from my experience. Um, but there's a lot of people that I've never heard of and just getting to know their stories has been really a highlight. But you, Kevin, have been pretty busy as well, building your own form of evangelism in your book. So why yeah. don't you tell us, we know, we know about audacious generosity, but tell us more. Yeah. I'm excited for well, you to share. Yeah. So the, uh, the exposure and influence of my first book, audacious generosity continues to grow. Uh, mm-hmm. Reviews on Amazon continue to increase. And I'm grateful for the Lord's favor there. It's so humbling to hear of people uh, on the other side of the U S or on the other side of the world that are being impacted by that. And I really look back and see what a timely word from God that book was because it was really pre-pandemic. Um, and we we began, that God began to lay on my heart to write this book, but, but he really championed the word of Christ that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And so when we would be shut down, when many people would um, be, um, would lose their their source of income, um, their employment, um, and and all of us would have to uh, experience some form of loss. God reminded us that it is His strategy to bless us by giving, and um, so I'm 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 grateful for that. But also now in 2021, He has laid on my heart to write a book entitled "Get to the Point." It's about a passionately pursuit of the presence of God. Uh, I'm really grateful for this word. It really helps us to remember or to recognize that every guidance and provision we'll ever need is available today in the presence of God. And it comes out in November. On November, I think it's the 9th. Um, Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. Uh, Let me just double check that um, real quick. And while he's double checking that, yes. if you have not subscribed to Generously Blessed, that is a quick daily devotional that you wake up to. I don't even know what time it's sent out. I just know no matter what time of the morning I wake up, it's in my inbox. So it's a quick, I mean, it takes what, maybe a minute. I think mm-hmm. there are some days that it's just a video where you just get to watch it, but it's really encouraging. So how can someone sign up for that? Yeah, so uh, you can go over, you can get to my website through globalhopeindia.org, but the direct link is kevinwhite.us and you can just uh, hit the subscribe now button there. It's a free resource, a one minute motivational. Yeah. Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, you get a very short clip, video clip. Uh, to encourage you that day. And then Tuesday, Thursday, you get a one minute devotional. Uh, And, and it's, it is a a small piece of audacious generosity that I share with you. And, and it's just helping you form a life that's generously blessed by God. You realizing that God's the giver and that giving depends upon what God puts into your hands. Mm -hmm. He's been showing us this for over 20 years at Global Hope India. We've seen the power of generosity to open up uh, villages in India that were 100% closed to the gospel, but Mm -hmm. God used generosity to open them up for a witness of the gospel. And John 3, 16, uh, Courtney, uh, remind me what that famous verse is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that yeah. whoever believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. Yeah, right there is the strategy of audacious generosity uh, that this God that is so 
plentiful and kind, um, so loved us that he gave. Uh, he, and he gave his one and only son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so when we give, we are most like Jesus. And so, yeah, the podcast are resources that are going around the world, the books. I have another book coming out in March entitled Watch Your Word. And I'm excited about this. It will be in a business edition, a nonprofit edition, a church edition, and an entrepreneur edition. And it really helps uh, each of us identify our why. That's been one of the lessons God has taught Global Hope India. Courtney, you remember when we used to exhaust people with the what we do in India? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But you yeah. know now the one word that 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 identifies our why. Why, why Global Hope India? Access. Access. In one word, we know that. Our staff knows that. Our board knows that. Our, our alumni hopefully are learning that if they didn't already know it. You now know it. Yeah. The one word of Global Hope India's why is the word access. We exist mm -hmm. to provide access to people far from God that they would be raised to life in Christ. There's still three billion people on planet Earth today that have limited to no access to know who Jesus is. And they face a Christless eternity. And we exist to do something about that through the local church. And so we invite your prayers. We invite your stewardship, your giving. Um, and just know that every gift matters. Every prayer makes a difference. And so continue to engage in the mission of God through Global Hope India. And so these are the resources that we're working on. Um, we have a lot of of, of communications through our social media and through our website. And we are just grateful to continue to be the voice of the Lord, uh, continuing to champion the great commission that he has given to us and really believe in God to use Global Hope India to be a part of finishing the task. We can't do it alone. We need uh, the entire Big C Church globally to rise up in unity together to finish the task of the Great Commission. Um, and so we're going to uh, have a big um, announcement next week. I don't want to spoil it yet, but Courtney, uh, you want to give just a little teaser about next week's episode? Well, if our word is access, then let's just say we're going to try to bring awareness of our mission, which is to bring access to the gospel in India, access, um, you know, just for people to be saved and know Christ. But we're also going to be doing that by bringing access for community members locally to really just get to enjoy a day full of fun um, where we will just point them to our mission. <laughs> and so yeah. I don't want to, I don't know how else to tell anymore because I'm excited about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so just stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to tune in next week for the Missions Changed My Life episode as we have a big announcement about a local event coming to the North Carolina area. Until then, thank you so much for yeah. being a part of the show, for all you do to remember India and Global Hope India in your prayers and in your mm -hmm. giving. And may God bless you as you continue to engage in the Great Commission through Global Hope India. God bless you. Amen. Have a great one. Thank you for listening to the Missions Change My Life show by Global Hope India with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us or subscribe for free through your favorite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program is a copyright of Global Hope India, all rights reserved. Each week we bring you a message of how God uses missions to bring real and lasting change through Jesus Christ. Join Global Hope India again next week for Missions Changed My Life with Kevin White. For missions Changed My Life with Kevin White.